Hello everybody, my name is Kim. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for taking the time to click on my video for the first time. And if you are a returning viewer or a subscriber, welcome back. So glad to see you again. All right, let's get started. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the zebra longwing butterfly. In this video, I will show you the different stages that the butterfly goes through in its life cycle from egg all the way to butterfly. I will also share with you the plants that I have in my garden that have attracted this butterfly to my garden. A little bit about my garden and a little bit about me. I am a home grower. So these are the butterflies and the plants that are in my backyard in South Florida. So I am in a subtropical climate in South Florida, growing zone 10B. All right, so let's get started. Let's begin by talking about the nectar plants that you will need in your garden to attract zebra longwing butterflies. Zebra longwings will nectar from a wide variety of different flowering plants. The plants that I have in my garden that I provide for the zebra longwing are the giant penta. Now be careful if you're in South Florida, there are different kinds of penta and you can see that this penta grows very tall. It grows up to four feet tall and it has a larger leaf. That's the kind you want. If you get the smaller pentas, they often do not survive the Florida summers. It just gets too hot and they don't do as well, but the giants do very well. Giant pentas do very well in my environment. Another type of plant that I provide for the zebra longwing are lantana. The yellow lantana variety, I believe, is the one that's native to Florida, if you are looking for Florida natives. I also provide um, a plant that's called golden showers, its common name. I believe its um, scientific name is Duranta erectata, something like that. I will definitely put the names in the in text in the video um, so you can see those names. All right, now nectar plants are great if you want to attract butterflies, but if you really want to be sure you're getting the butterfly that you're interested in, it's important to also have their host plants. The host plant for the zebra longwing is the passion vine. There are many different passion vines. The passion vine that is best for attracting zebra longwing would be Passiflora suberosa. If you're also interested in Florida natives, this is a native to Florida. It is or it's noticeable by its small green flowers. And it also has um, some fruit that develop. The fruit is dark. So it looks very dark blue, dark blue purple, maybe even black. Um, and those are the berries that are produced after the flower. The leaves are much smaller than other passion vines. Now, the zebra longwing will lay its eggs on some other passion vine varieties. I used to have one that is called Inspiration. It's a purple one. The ones you should definitely avoid are the red ones. Okay, so passion flowers that are red have a lot of toxins in them and it's too much for the zebra longwings. The zebra longwings will not lay their eggs on the red ones. If they were to, the caterpillars would pro most likely not survive. So you're really looking for Suberosa, which is the smaller one native to Florida and has those little green flowers or um, check with your local nursery. There's a lot of nurseries that specialize in butterfly plants and make sure you check with them to make sure you are getting the one that is appropriate for the zebra longwing. Once you have your plants, next it's time to think about placement. Where in the garden will you put your plants? It's fine, in fact, preferable for the nectar plants to be getting 
sun. The nectar plants will do better and they'll flower more if they are getting full sun for at least part of the day and some plants for most of the day. So having the nectar plants in the sun is perfectly fine, but your Subarosa, your Passiflora Subarosa or your Passion Vine needs to have shady time for the zebra long wings to want to go to them. In my um, little trellis that I have my passion flowers on, the Subarosa is closest to the house. So you can see in that archway in some of the video coming up that um, the Subarosa, where the zebra long wings lay their egg, is toward the house. So it gets a lot of shade. Also because of the arch of the trellis on the inside, there's a lot of shade. Even if there's, sh there's sun coming down on the top of the trellis, underneath, where the zebra long wings like to hang out, there's shade. The zebra long wings prefer to hang out on the passion vine that is getting some shade and is not in direct sun. You can see from the photos provided that the zebra long wings, when they lay their eggs, they lay them in little clusters. There are other butterflies that will also lay their eggs on passion vines. So in order to tell the difference between the zebra long wings and some other butterflies, that lay eggs on passion vines is look for the little clusters. If you see clusters on those little tendrils, the new growth on the vine that sticks out away from the plant, that's where the zebra longwing likes to lay her eggs. Up next, let's talk about the caterpillars. Okay, so the larval stage of the zebra longwing butterfly is a pretty cool looking caterpillar. They start off teeny tiny and don't develop this look until a little bit later after they have um, shed their skin a few times. But when um, the caterpillars are more developed, they look like this. They are white with black markings and these black spikes. Now those black spikes look intimidating, but they are actually soft. They will not harm you. One of my favorite things about these particular caterpillars is they are very efficient in the way they eat. You can see they eat in little rows, <laughs> right? So they can, they just do one little row of leaf at a time. They're very efficient eaters. Um, and then as they grow multiple times, they will shed their skin. You can see the caterpillar towards the bottom that is much lighter and brighter than the other one here. There's the picture. Um, that one has recently shed and you can actually see its skin right behind it. Here it is on the leaf. So don't get freaked out when you see that. It's not um, a caterpillar that has dissolved into nothing. It is the skin that was left behind after the caterpillar shed as it grows. When it has grown enough and it's ready to form a chrysalis, it does this J hang position. After the J hang, its final shedding of its skin results in a chrysalis. These chrysalises are identifiable by those little things hanging down that look kind of like ears or like owl, those owl tufts. But um, they also have silver markings right there in the center, which are really beautiful. These chrysalises also are interesting because they will wiggle. One of the few um, caterpillar or butterfly chrysalises that I've seen where they kind of wiggle back and forth in their chrysalis stage. I haven't seen that too often, so I find that really interesting. The butterflies will stay in the chrysalis form for about two weeks, depending on the weather. When it's colder, they stay in longer. Sometimes when it's really hot, it prompts them to come out a little sooner. But after a couple weeks, the butterfly will emerge. And don't worry if you see that it's just sitting there and you're like, why isn't it flying away? Is there something wrong? They actually hang for quite a while like this. Um, at least an hour, sometimes more, because first they have to pump up their wings and then 
they need their wings to dry out completely. A lot of times they'll pump their wings, just drying them out and kind of testing out those wings before they will actually take off and start flying. So when you see them hanging there, don't worry, they will be fine. They're just taking their time and getting ready to fly. Okay, so there we have our zebra long wing life cycle. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will include um, some additional footage in the rest of the video of just some um, zebra long wings hanging out in my garden. I hope you enjoy. Um, if you have not subscribed, remember to hit that subscribe button. I will be posting more videos of not only butterflies and my butterfly garden, but I also have been posting quite a few videos on orchids if you're interested in orchids. All right, thank you so much for watching. Remember to give the video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.